Welcome to Rethink Ed, where together we power potential. Today, we're going to take a look at the different lesson libraries in Vizzle. You'll find that we have three main areas to search under our Lessons tab, including our Academic Curriculum, our Skill Suite, and Vizzle Classic. Today, we're going to explore each area and how you can use it to support your classroom students and learning journeys. As a reminder, the lessons can be used in different ways for different types of students. You might be using Vizzle for your Tier 3 students, those with more intensive needs, maybe in a self-contained classroom. You might be using our curriculum and our skill suites as curriculum from beginning to end, units, topics, and all of those resources. Maybe you have students that are Tier 2. You might be using it to look for specific standards and topics to support the curriculum in your district or the areas where you need to close the gaps. Same thing with Tier 1. It's that opportunity to go in and find supporting lessons to instruct, engage, and generalized learning across the board. It's important to know that we have three main areas, but we have two curriculum sets. What's a little bit of a differentiator? Well, our curriculum includes leveled activity sets. That means we have a recommended sequence of activities for all of our topics within these two areas. We have a pre-assessment to check for prior knowledge. We have instructional lessons to introduce the content generalization, practice activities, and a post-assessment, really supporting universal design for learning in terms of gathering information, providing instruction in different formats, and then checking to see that the students have the information to move forward. We also have unit guides. The unit guides are unique. It breaks down all of the topics that are included within the set. It also has your state standards there, so it's a great accountability check. We have lesson plans with detailed instructions and differentiated resources. All of our libraries provide data tracking and progress monitoring. You can print any lesson, any activity. You can go into the specific activity card and there's a series of additional options across the board. This also means you can make a copy to edit. That means you can change lessons to make sure that it's supporting students in a way that's unique to them. You can create your own custom playlist in any of our libraries as well by clicking on the activities tab in curriculum, skill suite, or classic Vizzle create your own playlist and way to reinforce and practice those specific skills. Also, as a reminder, all students have a personalized profile with a series of accessibility tools. Our goal is independence. We want students to be engaged and learning in a way that is meaningful and independent as they progress. So taking a quick step back, we're gonna focus on the curriculums right now. So for both the academic and skill suite, you'll find that all of our topics have pre and post assessments. Just 10 quick questions. We wanna do a little work to see what the students know. Our academic units include summative assessments. So at the end of the unit, we're gonna check that overall knowledge in a deeper way, lots of different question types to see what the students learned. We do have that coming soon for our skill suites as well with a new observational assessment. When we talk about leveled activities, I mentioned this before, it's to assess, instruct, and generalize. So we have a variety of templates to capture that student information and push things out in different ways, all the way down to a custom student response where students might be drawing or writing and sharing that information with the teacher feedback loop. As we look at the details for each program, we're gonna start with our academic intervention curriculum. This is set up by grade level. So as we go in and look at those filters, you can choose your specific grade of instruction, your course subject area, and find full courses to teach all of these things across the grade levels. So if I am an elementary school teacher, I can go in and search third grade math and find a series of units and topics to work on throughout the school year that are all aligned to standards. This is across the board. So we're excited to share this and dig a little bit deeper. Our skill suite curriculum is grade banded. What does this mean? So as we go through, we have life skills, social skills, and transition and vocational skills. Life skills and social skills have K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12. And we take those units and evolve them band over band with the same set areas so that the student is continuing to evolve as they mature and move through high school graduation. Our transition and vocational set is really meant for our students 14 and up. So this takes those skills and is applying them in different ways, although everything really fluidly connects across the board. 
coming in and working up or down. So if you find that the student is in high school, but isn't quite ready for a set, you can always go down and look at those middle school sets or the elementary school sets. Vertical alignment is important. And we want to make sure that you know that you can go up or down and have access to the entire suite. Our last area is Visual Classic. Well, these are standalone lessons. These are activities that fall outside of the curriculum, sort of our original lessons that were created in Visual. So if you're a classic user and have been using Visual for a while, you might recognize this area. You can come in and search by uh, grade band. You can find specific lessons to support a goal or objective. I like that you can create your own custom playlist and your unique set to that student. You can still tag IEP goals and learning objectives, provides that opportunity for just additional practice. So grab a topic in our curriculum and then come in and find supporting practice activities in Visual Classic. So we're going to take a look here at those areas in just a moment. I always like to finish with an overview of just data tracking and progress monitoring because it's so key to what we do, knowing that for all of our lesson libraries and all of our activities, if you take time to save them into student accounts, it will track and report on that progress. And that's what we want. We really want to understand and capture that student learning journey and make sure our students are moving forward. Let's take a look at the library. All right, once you log into Vizzle, you'll see a lessons tab at the top of the screen. This is gonna take you to the different content libraries in Vizzle. Notice here are our three areas that we just talked about. We have our academic curriculum, our skill suite, and Vizzle Classic. We're just gonna take a few minutes to go through each so you can see what they look like live and in action. So we're gonna take a look and start with our academic curriculum. Um, you can choose a filter, whether it's topic, unit, or activity view. I prefer the unit view because I like to see the sequence of the units in order, and I can always dig in deeper, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Underneath, you're going to choose your core subject area, so ELA, Math, Science, or Social Studies. And then underneath, you can use these filters to toggle and go to any grade level in terms of instruction. The learning evolves grade over grade based on those standards. So whether you're in elementary school or you're in high school, you can choose from our high school courses as well. So just click the apply button and it's gonna sort and filter that information. So lots of resources at your fingertips. So going back, we're gonna do a few just quick samples. So if I'm in ELA, I can come down and let's say, we'll shoot in the middle, I'm gonna click on fifth grade. You'll see the series of units that are in sequence here. And then you can come down and grab and organize the information. So if you are, one of our tier three students as a teacher, you might be presenting these in order. Simply click on the details button. And then this is gonna give you the topics in the sequence that we recommend. Gives you your unit guide that you can click on to see more details about the key vocabulary, essential questions and specific standards. Click on the topic to get your activities that are included in this particular set. We talked about levels of activities. This is where you're gonna use the drop down. One Level one is our higher level text. Level two is mid-level with additional visual cues. Level three is sort of minimal text with maximum cues. So think about the students in your classroom from tier three to one. What are the resources that you're looking to provide for your students? So I'm going to click on the right level of instruction, and this is going to load in my activities that I can then assign to my students in the classroom. What I love about this is this is our recommended order from our pre-assessment, our instructional resources, our generalization activities, and our post-assessment. Well, what do I do with these activities? You can always click on the lesson plan, which is going to give you an overview. There's that key vocabulary. It's going to give you differentiated student goals, an overview of the activities, and a recommended order. It's going to give you some instructional practices and procedures and some strategies of support. For high school, it will go into five days of instruction and a little bit more detail. But know that these resources are here to organize everything that you need in terms of providing that instruction to your students. Well, what if I'm ready to save this information? Simply click the assign button at the top of the screen. You can choose which level of instruction you're looking to save. If there's activities that you want to exclude from your list, go ahead and uncheck any boxes that you'd like to and then save it to your group. I'm in ELA, this is my level two group that I've created. Again, I like that I can organize my students by instructional level, by subject area, it just makes it easy. Choose your start and end date or custom date, and then your retake option. Do you want them to play the activities more than one time? Would you like to add it to your teacher resources folder? This is a great place to find things later on. Can also add it to my classroom instructional tab. Click on assign, I'm off and running that simple. 
You can always add a custom goal by clicking on the box and adding it and assigning it to your students. Just save and close. I can also easily just switch my level of instruction. So this makes it easy for me to go and navigate to the additional levels of support that I might need. It just swaps out those activities for the right level. I click on the assign button, choose my student group, click my start and end date, my retake option, and that assign button. Notice in just a few clicks, I have the entire sequence of activities all set up and assigned to my student folders. It's that simple. I'm going to click back to lessons. So as a quick reminder, when you're coming in and working on the academic library, you have access to the four core subjects. You can filter by grade level and work through units, topics, and activities using the filters at the top of the screen. Next up, we're going to take a look at our skill suite. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the skill suite button here. And I'm going to point out some additional filters here. You can still see topic, unit, and activity view. Still, I prefer to start with the unit view because I can see those main areas. And then underneath, you can use those filters to navigate by grade band. So if I click on kindergarten or first grade, you're going to see the same set of activities. It's K to 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12. What changes is the standards, making sure that the standards are aligned correctly when you go into those particular resources. Okay. So clicking on those buttons helps me navigate and find those particular sets. What I love about this in our skill suite is everything is connected with the same unit and the topics evolve based on that grade, age, and level. And that's what we want. We want to evolve those skills from kindergarten all the way up through graduation. So say we're looking at money management. You'll see in K2, we're going to start with identifying coins and then combinations of coins. As you go through and you look at these different details, it gives you that opportunity to support those specific areas and grab your level of instruction. You can still see your lesson plan, your unit guide, and our observational scoring sheet. You can print this out so that I can track data that's happening outside of Vizzle. This will be an interactive tool coming soon. And then our extension activities area. So all of our skill suites have leveled extension activities. It's an opportunity to come through and you can click on these different uh, printables, again, different levels of instruction, again, different kinds of visual supports. Thinking about your audience, what are the needs of the students as you're providing these resources? So just different ways to engage. Ready to assign, click my assign button, and you're going to work through that same process. So since we're still talking about money, this is my L1 set. I can save it to my L1 math group. It's going to tag those kiddos, start and end date, same set of steps. Click the assign button. If you want to tag it to a goal, you can easily click on the box. Enter and save. Just a few clicks. I'm going to click back to my lessons. So if I am working with students and I'm wanting to use any of these resources in this library, just click on the filter and you can drop down. Life skills, social skills, and our transition area. Our transition set is meant for our middle school, high school students. So as you come in, you're going to see all these resources set up and it's a complement to the social skills and life skills area. So um, some things are across the board. This is another set of resources to continue working on independence as students move towards graduation. Lots of different topics and units working through um, all of those employability skills, uh, employment, uh, et cetera. So Simply follow that same set of steps for going in and exploring those units, finding those topics, choosing your level, and finding resources here to navigate and assign to your students. Okay. All right. Our last area that we're going to go ahead and explore here, I'm going to go ahead and clear out all my filters, and I'm going to navigate to our classic Vizzle. I mentioned before that these are standalone lessons. So the activities that you find in Classic were built before our curriculum was put live. So these are lessons you won't find attached to the curriculum or skill suite. It's an opportunity to create your own custom set. If a student's working on a particular skill, you can come in and reinforce that with additional activities. So say I have a student and they're working on money, maybe they're working on coin ID. Simply type in your keyword, choose your subject area, and it's going to provide that filter. It's going to show you the subject. It's going to give you a grade band. You can always click to see what the lessons look like by clicking on the play button. The detail is going to give you more in information around that particular lesson. 
You can always click the more button to add it to your group, print it, copy to edit if you wanna make changes to it or create a share link. So lots of resources. If I'm creating my own custom list, maybe I have a student that has a goal around coin ID. I'm looking at the level here so I can see this is a level two. That's what I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna grab a level two and then I'm looking for some additional practice activities. So I'm gonna grab one here. And again, just scrolling down, looking to see what else I might need here. I like the idea of using ones with real photos. I can see that I've grabbed four lessons in the lower right-hand corner. I'm gonna click assign. Here are my activities. If I determine there's something from this list that I don't want to include, I can just click on the trash can, boop. There's my three lessons. I'm gonna save it to the student or students that I want to provide that additional reinforcement or practice for. Choose my start and end date, my retake option, and click assign. Goal, coin ID, save and close. The idea here is it's additional resources. It's more lessons to help your students practice, navigate, and move through. If you're working on academics, I always recommend starting with that academic curriculum. This is our newest content um, in terms of exploring the library. I'm going to take my coin ID out here again, making sure you refresh your filters. Start with the units and the topics to organize the information that you need. If you're looking for a specific intervention, you can always choose the standards from the dropdown. So choose your subject, choose your grade level, choose the standard that you're looking to assign to. So again, it's all active and easy to navigate. Your standards are going to populate as you explore. So whether you're using it as a curriculum, whether you're using it for intervention or enrichment, Vizzle has thousands of lessons to support your student's learning journey in the classroom. Let us know how we can help. We're excited to be here working with you in this new school year. Happy Vizzling.